Hey everyone, welcome back. If it's your first time here, then hi, my name is Becca and I'm filming this on Valentine's Day, so happy Valentine's Day. I'm not necessarily going for like a Valentine's look, but there are a lot of new things that I wanna try. Um, some pretty hyped new releases. So I am gonna do a full face pretty much of new makeup today. I've got the new Kosas BB Burst Tinted Gel Cream, the new Glossier Cloud Paint Bronzers. I have the new slash kind of re-release of the Merit uh, Flesh Balm in the shade Rouge. This came out um, as part of their limited edition set, I think over holiday or last holiday, but they released it finally as part of their permanent range. The new, well new-ish, Charlotte Tilbury Queen of Luck palette. I think this released over holiday, but I got my hands on it and I actually haven't had a chance to test it yet. So this is the Queen of Luck palette. The other Swede mascara that I didn't get to test in my last new makeup video, the Cloud Mascara, as well as new gloss and lip balm shades from Lawless. So there's a lot going on here. I'm gonna start with base as usual. I just have my regular skincare on, ready to go. I mentioned this last video, my skin is not very happy with me right now. I think I have perioral dermatitis because every time I've been brushing my teeth, my lips just burn and get inflamed and it feels like, like they tingle and there are like bumps left behind. And I do have a bit of a rash around my mouth. I don't know if you can tell. I also have some leftover pigmentation from like a huge cystic spot. So it's a great time to test a new base product, but here we are. So this is the Kosas BB Burst Tinted Gel Cream. I have a very hit or miss experience with Kosas and um, I'm not sure how I feel about this yet. I haven't tried it on my face. Um, this is, first of all, I really don't like the packaging. I don't wanna just be a hater, but I feel like it's a little bit drugstore, like it's giving Maybelline, and I kind of want more from a higher end experience. This is $38 for one fluid ounce. They sent over three shades. They all look kind of light, but I think the deepest one could work for me. So they sent over 12, which is light neutral. They sent over 13, which is light cool, and 14, which is light plus neutral warm. I'm typically a light medium neutral. So it looks like this, has a little pump, and it's called BB Burst, which is kind of confusing because I don't know what the burst part of this is. It's not like the Chanel Water Fresh tint where there's actually pigment bubbles that burst. It's pre-mixed, but maybe burst has something to do with like the way it feels on the skin. So let me just swatch these for you. They do, I think I mentioned they have a pump and it's a good pump, like you get control over how much comes out. Okay, that's 12, 13, and 14. And I don't know if you can tell, but it looks almost like a more pigmented version of Hollywood Flawless Filter. I'm not doing a very good job at this. Do you see what I mean? It has that glossy sort of pearly sheen running through it. And I'm wondering if this is going to be a repeat of the Kosas, um, their Glow IV Skin Illuminating Enhancer, which I recently decluttered because it just was so like Tin Man on me. These don't look quite as silvery. I'm actually more optimistic about these, but they do have uh, like a pearliness to them. I don't know if any of these feel like a perfect match for me. Like I think I need a neutral undertone, but I need something deeper. Um, I'm going to try 14 first just because it's the deepest of the three and see if it works for me. So they say this is a buildable gel cream. They say it has a light coverage with a natural finish and they also say the best way to apply it is with fingers. So I guess I'll just start on one side. It does feel nice and cooling on the skin. This could work for me if it doesn't get too peachy actually. It is a little light and I am actually feeling it like set down as I'm blending it in and as it's sitting on my skin. It does have like a blurring quality. I don't know if there are silicones in this, but it feels like it's filling in my pores a bit. That's half my face done. It's definitely brightening. Um, it's not too, too light, but I could go, I think a shade or two deeper, um, but it is definitely blurring and I like the, um, 
dry down feeling on the skin. It doesn't feel hydrating necessarily, but it does feel like it's giving me like a soft filter over the skin. I'm using more than I anticipated. I'm gonna go in on this side because it does have a slightly stiffer texture than I was anticipating. Like it holds its shape when I pump it out versus being more fluid. I'm gonna try to go over this redness here or that pigmentation but um, obviously this is a light coverage product, so I don't expect high coverage over this by any means. It's just kind of blurring the pigmentation. I've been sitting here for a while trying to decide how I feel. Other than the skin tone being a little bit too bright, I actually do like the way it's sitting on my skin. I feel like it's actually going to stay in place and it's not going to slide around. And I do understand why they say apply with fingers because I think a brush could look potentially streaky with a formula like this. And I'm happy to say it's not glittery. I'm definitely gonna need to warm it up with bronzer. I don't have a new concealer, so I'm just going in with my Tower 28 concealer in EP. And I'm using the Real Techniques 242, just around the eyes. As I'm sitting here, I feel like the texture of this is changing from when it first set down. It's almost like my skin absorbed the dewiness of it, even though um, I had my skin fully prepped as usual. And now I can see the product on the skin. It's not the most flattering. It's almost like it's making my skin kind of look dry, even though I have oily skin. Um, because the product is sitting on top of the skin, it just looks a little bit cakey. I feel like it's sinking into my pores a little bit. So I'm gonna actually powder this ASAP, especially in the T-zone, just to try to prevent that from happening. Kosas actually sent over their Cloud Set Powder in Breezy, so I'm actually just going to lightly powder in the T-zone only just to try to prevent that from sinking into my pores where they're most visible. I'm so confused. It's like kind of bunching up. It's almost like it's pilling, but it's not. It's not actually pilling, but it's, it's kind of starting to look textured on my skin. I don't know, I gotta move on because I don't know how to fix this. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the Glossier Cloud Paint in their bronzers. So they released these in four or five shades. They sent over four shades to me all but the deepest shade. So they sent over Sail, Dune, Swept, and Coast. They just come in their classic cloud paint packaging. It's like a paint tube. It's not my favorite, but my experience with these is that it just works best when you put a little bit on the back of your hand and you really don't need a lot. These are $22 and 0.33 fluid ounces. So that's light to deep. I'm wondering how deep their deepest shade is. Let me blend these out for you. Sail, Dune, Swept, and Coast. Here they are blended out. So you can actually see, for example, these two look more neutral. These two have more of a red undertone. I don't know if it's just me, but these feel a little bit less pigmented than the original Glossier Cloud Paints. But to be honest, I haven't used a cloud paint in a couple of years, but they were so, so pigmented back in the day. I don't know if they've adjusted the formula since or just for the bronzers, but they're definitely not as pigmented, which I think is good, especially for bronzers. Makes them a little bit more versatile and easy to work with. I think I'm gonna go for the second shade here, which is Dune. Even though it's a little bit warm, I feel like I could use that right now just because the um, BB Burst did wash me out a little bit. So just putting like literally a dot on the back of my hand like that. I'm gonna take a BK Beauty A507, it's like an angled brush, and really work it into the whole brush. Not just picking it up once, but making sure it's evenly coated on the brush so that once it goes on my face, it's not like I'm just transferring a dot to my face. So I won't lie, I fell off Glossier for a little while. Ooh, that's nice. Ooh, really not too, too pigmented. Buildable for sure. I fell off Glossier for a little while. I know they face some heat for just like their workplace culture and I haven't really heard anything about it since, but I do feel like my sense is that there's been a culture shift. I think there's been a lot of turnover within the company. 
Since then, they have entered Sephora. I actually know a few people who work on their team and they seem to really be happy with it. I also feel like Glossier has been um, a little bit more intentional about offering deeper shades in their ranges, including their cloud paints. The, they also sent these over. These are um, Eve and Spark. So there's like a plum and a true red. So yeah, I'm curious what you guys think, like what's your sense of Glossier right now? I would love to know in the comments. They were just such a, a disruptive brand when they first came out, you know, like what was that 10, over 10 years ago? They really brought minimalist, clean looking beauty to the forefront. And so I'm curious like what your thoughts are now because there are so many brands that do what Glossier do now and you can see the influence still, so yeah. I'm really liking the way this is going on. It's very subtle. It's not overly pigmented. It's super buildable. And it's also drying down to a very natural finish. There's no sheen, there's no pearl in it. That's something I've always liked about cloud paints is that they look like skin. I was a little worried Dune would look too warm on me, but because it shears out so much, it actually just warmed up my skin in a very natural way. The Kosas BB Burst, it doesn't look like it's getting worse. I'm hoping this is just where it stays, but I will say a texture like this, especially with gel creams and skin tints, they have a lot of film forming properties, so they can potentially emphasize any texture you have. For example, my spot right here it's like at that point where it's healing but it's kind of peeling off too like it's a little flaky and I feel like it's emphasizing flakiness but we're here now we're just gonna roll with it I have the Merit Flesh Balm in the shade Rouge and this is their true red shade I just think it's so pretty I know a lot of people are scared of red blush it is intimidating but a formula like this I think is perfect where it's sheer it's not a bright, bright red like doll cheeks. You'll just see. I mean, I haven't even used this yet, so I don't know, but I think you'll see. I am familiar with this formula though. I have a whole brand review on Merit reviewing every single product from the line. So I have a feeling I'm going to like this. I find that with flesh balms, the best way to apply is with fingers or a brush. Let me swatch it for you. So that is Rouge. You can see how evenly it goes on. It's just like a juicy, popsicle stain sort of look. I'm gonna go in with fingers just a little bit like that. Oh, it's so pretty. It's like a true cherry red, like a blue based red. Almost looks like a strawberry flush on the cheeks. I'm gonna blend out the edges actually with a Real Techniques um, setting brush, just because I powdered here a little bit so I don't wanna lift it with my fingers. It's just so like youthful and fresh. That's it for cheeks. It's just really pretty, natural, youthful, but definitely still there. It's on the more pigment inside for the Merit Flesh Balms. A lot of their shades are on the lighter side, but I like to see a little bit more pigment in the range, so I'm happy about that. I'm just powdering around my eyes because I am using the Charlotte Tilbury Queen of Luck palette. So here's the palette. It has one matte shade, it has two shimmers, and it has one of her baked metallics. Of her formulas, I definitely pr prefer the baked metallics. I find that they're a lot more elegant. The Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow formula is good. It's not like mind blowing to me, but I am excited to try this shade. Okay, here are the swatches. This is actually really pretty. It's a lot lighter than I was expecting. So the metallic pearl shade is really pretty. It has a really bright sheen. And then you've got this gold pink duochrome. That is the baked shade. You've got a very bright gold, yellow gold topper almost, and then you've got the matte brown. These shadows tend to be on the drier side. They're not really like a creamy, dense sort of shadow. It's on the drier side. I think that's what makes it easier for people to work with. And I do think Charlotte Tilbury definitely markets themselves to the everyday consumer. They're not necessarily like, ooh, innovators of crazy formulas. They're not experimental. I'm just gonna take a fluffy brush into the matte brown. I think they do what works for people and they do it well and they know their target audience for sure. I don't think this is going to show up on deep skin tones, the matte shade, but the toppers will. So just lightly sculpting the eye, creating a little bit of definition. 
See what I mean? It's just a really quick, easy blend. I am gonna connect it to the lower lash line, I think. And then I'm gonna take my finger into this duochrome baked shade and it is on the drier side, it's like flaky, so I find that it's best applied with fingers, just kind of stamping it down. But I hope the duochrome comes through because it's a pink and yellow gold shift. I'm going to take my finger into the yellow gold topper and then just apply it to the center of the lid for a bit of brightness right above the pupil. Picking up some of this pearl shade with a Real Techniques shader brush, just for a little brightness in the inner corner. And then just a little bit of depth, bringing that back in the outer corner. My sense of this palette is that you're not gonna get a whole lot of variety in terms of eye looks because it's basically three toppers and a matte shade. So you're gonna get variations on a pinky, goldy, champagne sort of theme. It's a pretty theme, and if you like it and you are a minimalist, that's great, but I wouldn't go into this palette expecting to get a lot of different looks. Connecting the outer corner, and then I'm just gonna take a little bit of shimmer right under the pupil on the lower lash line, just to mirror the top lid. I do feel like I need some eyeliner for this look, so I'm gonna try these. Persona just came out with new shades of their eyeliner, and they're really nice neutrals. So this one is Stone, which is a slightly shimmery metallic brown. This is Chocolate, which is a matte chocolate warm brown. And then there's the shade Graphite, which is a metallic gray. I think I'm gonna go for graphite just because I want a little bit more depth than something super warm, but I'm not going for a real like graphic liner. I just want something to bring out the lash line. I am familiar with this formula, and something that I think is nice is that it's not too, too pigmented. They're definitely buildable, but they start out they're very forgiving because they don't start out too inky or too pigmented. I'm not doing a wing or anything, I'm just kind of like letting the liner fade out at the end of my lash line. Also, if you're wondering, these are very smudge proof, like they set down and they do not move. Next, I'm gonna try the Swede Cloud Mascara. I have really been enjoying their other Pro Lift mascara with the comb wand. This is what the wand for the cloud mascara looks like, and I'm actually really excited about this because it is tapered, it has plastic bristles, which makes working product through my lashes really easy. I do wanna mention I just curled my lashes off camera and I did get a bit of fallout on my cheeks just from those topper shades because they are on the drier side, so I have to mention that. I'm gonna go into this without my usual um, Peri Para Ink Mascara Fixer. I just wanna see how this applies on its own with no help. You guys know I have very, very fine, very, very short lashes, although I've been using my lash serums and that helps the NYK1 lash serum. I already can tell I like this because interestingly, the formula is not as wet as their other Pro Lift formula. That's almost like a gel consistency. This one's a little bit drier, but it's giving me a lot of control over the lashes. And when you have fine lashes like me, you need those spiky bristles to really help comb the product through. Oh my God, I just looked up close at my nose, like right here, and there's product bunching up from the Kosas. It's, it's rough. I think you're able to build a bit more volume with this formula than the Pro Lift formula because this is so light and on the drier side, you're able to build layers without it getting cakey or sticking together. You guys, Swede really knows what they're doing with mascara. I don't know what's going on in their lab over there, but both of their mascaras have been such a win. I'm assuming this one won't smudge because the other one, they're both water resistant and the other one didn't smudge on me. 
Um, obviously I'll report back on everything in a pinned comment like I always do at the end of like a wear test. I also did um, add another layer of the, of the Lawless Creamy Brow Wax through my brows just for a little bit more pigment and definition. Okay, I had to take a pause because Sean just walked in with flowers for me. Orchids are our flower, so he just got me a little arrangement for Valentine's Day and chocolate covered strawberries, which I will be eating right after this. Okay, for lips, I'm a little nervous because my lips are still pretty irritated, so I don't wanna put anything too intense on them, including like menthol. I wanted to try all of these on, but I don't think my lips can handle lips watching right now. So Lawless came out with um, three shades of their lip gloss and three shades of their lip balm. And they are meant to be paired together, so I'll show you what they look like. I am excited about these because they're are more nude shades. So this is one called Nudie. This is their Forget the Filler Line Plumping, Lip Plumping Line Smoothing <laughs> Gloss. And Nudie is just a really nice, like, light pink. These are a gloss that um, really defy expectation for me because I typically don't like a thick gloss, but I find that these are really grippy and they do smooth over your lip lines and they last a long time, but they're not sticky on the lips. This is Lavender Sorbet, which is so cute. It's a very cool toned lavender right there. This is the one I'm really excited about. It's called Maple Sugar. It's the most gorgeous brown nude right there. It's much more pigmented than these two. So pretty. If I were to be using these, I would use that one for sure. I'll have to swatch them another time or swatch them on the lips another time when I'm not dying. And then each of these shades have corresponding lip balms. So this is Whisper. These are gonna be a lot more sheer. <laughs> That's Whisper right there. I find their tinted balm formula to be almost like a matte balm. Then there's Cupid right there, a really light, cool toned pink. And then Amaretto, which is a beautiful brown toned nude right there. I'm happy to see more pigmented options in these just because I've wondered previously with their lighter shades, whether they show up on deep skin tones. And I think these will be really, really beautiful on medium to deeper skin tones. I think I'm gonna finish off with something I know my lips can tolerate. These are the Naturium Phyto Lip Balms in the shade, um, this is in the shade Latte from their Cafe collection, which I think they restocked recently. I don't know if it's still in stock. I'll link it below along with everything else. But these are fragrance free and they are actually healing on the lips. So I'm gonna go in with this. On me, it's like a pinky nude, it's forgiving, and it also feels nourishing on the lips. I do have a 15% off discount code for Naturium. It's Becca15 if you're curious to use it. All right, that's everything. Let's talk about this skin, cause girl, it's, it's not looking great. <laughs> I like the way the final look overall turned out, but close up, there are some things that are kind of a mess and we gotta talk about it. The Kosas BB Burst, my skin is looking progressively worse by the hour. I've been sitting here maybe a little over an hour and my skin is starting to look more textured. It's almost like it's creating, it's catching on texture and so it's emphasizing certain areas like around my nose, it's caking up. It's sinking into my pores and it's leaving visible pigment on the surface of my skin. I feel like a lot of people with dry skin talk about this where it's like the skin has absorbed all of the hydrating properties of a formula and you're left with pigment only on top of the skin. It's almost like it's doing that and I'm kind of bummed. I'm like, did I not, did I use too much maybe? I think I used a little over two pumps. Um, I don't know, it looked good when I first put it on, but the longer it's sitting here, the texture's not agreeing with me so much. I'll report back at the end of the day, but I'm not loving it right now, and it is not inspiring optimism in me that it's going to look better by the end of the day. It's not, I don't think. 
Obviously with any base product, you kind of need to experiment with different skincare underneath to see what works best. So I won't write it off immediately, but um, it's not inspiring optimism for me right now. I do really like the powder. I've been using it a few days now and I do find it's really blurring. It, it makes the skin look soft. It's not super oil controlling for me. So I don't think in the summer, for example, when I'm really oily, it's going to hold up. But for now, it does look nice and it blurs the pores and makes the skin look really soft. Glossier Cloud Paint Bronzers. I'm just so happy these are finally here. They're really easy to work with, at least the shade that I used. Um, but they all look at like a similar consistency where it's not too pigmented, it blends out, it looks like skin. It's not so pigmented that you can see the product sitting on the skin and it's easy to apply. Very user-friendly for a liquid bronzer. I feel like liquid bronzers are so hit or miss. They can be just too pigmented, they can be patchy, they can be uneven, but the application was really easy, especially when I used the brush. The Merit Flesh Balm I knew I would love because I like this formula. I find it's a cream blush that even though it's on the dewier side, it doesn't break up and it doesn't move around because it's a very thin texture. I think this shade is going to be flattering on a lot of skin tones and it's cute, it's youthful, it's happy, it's a very cheerful kind of flush. The Queen of Luck palette is pretty. It's not knocking my socks off. The formulas are on the drier side. Um, I do think the finished look is pretty, but it's not going to give you a lot of versatility. I think the best of her eyeshadow palettes that I've tried is the Exaggerize palette, but if you're looking for an eyeshadow from Charlotte Tilbury, I still think her single potted cream shadows, the Eyes to Mesmerize, are the way to go. Another winning mascara from Swede. I'll obviously report back on how it holds up, but I'm feeling really good about this and I'm really excited to keep testing it. I can't believe how good their mascaras are. I know people talk about them all the time and it's just so rare that a mascara lives up to the hype for me because I have very specific lash needs and this is really giving me everything I want. The Persona eyeliners are great. I've used them for a long time. They're super, super smudge proof. If you need a really high performing eyeliner, these are great. They're not overly pigmented, but they really set down and do not move even in the waterline. And these are all really flattering soft shades that kind of work across all different eye colors. The Lawless lip products I obviously didn't get to, but just based on swatches and because I do know this formula in other shades, I think Maple Sugar is probably the standout release of all of these six new shades. It's just so pretty. It's going to be flattering on a lot of different skin tones. I love a brown toned cafe sort of nude. And I do think they needed a shade like this in this range. So that is it for me. I will report back. I can probably do like an eight to nine hour wear test of this today. So I do always report back in a pinned comment how things wore throughout the day. I'm really keeping an eye on the skin, that BB burst, um, just pray for me. I hope it stays where it is. I just hope it doesn't get worse, but I'll let you know in the comment. If it was your first time, I would love for you to subscribe. I hope you'll come hang out and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.